welcome to the details of life i'm your host marcus wilson and thank you ladies and gentlemen for coming back and visiting me one more time today we have one of the iconic names in au grassroots basketball mike mullins owner and founder of illinois wolves an under armor circuit team he's been in the game for 20 years so they weren't always under armor but when i tell you guys if you don't know who he is you should and a lot of times people don't know the people that are doing work behind the scenes this is one of those guys that I believe does things the right way for the right reasons. When when I asked him about some of the tournaments he's won and some of the players that he's produced, I don't think people realize how many pros and how many good players have come out of this program. And then even in his own family, he has two sons that are college coaches, Brian Mullins, who's the head coach at Southern Illinois, and then his other son, Brendan, who is actually an assistant at Southern Illinois. So obviously the guy knows the game. He's been giving it to youth for years and then watching them thrive and so love talking with him you guys are going to love getting to know his story and know, learn more about his program so without further ado let's go ahead and chime in with mike mullins founder of illinois wolves basketball like i just prefaced ladies and gentlemen today we have founder and director of a legendary club put out so much great talent over the years i'm excited to catch up with Mike Mullins, how you doing, Mike? I'm doing well, Marcus. Thanks for having me today. Man, thanks a lot for coming on. And, you know, I just kind of want to start with, you being the founder, could you tell us how did all this start? You know, what's the origin of your club? And then if you could even tell us, how did you end up getting your sponsorship deal and, and be on the on the shoe circuit? Sure. It, uh, I would say, started as a neighborhood uh, organization group because, uh, Good Lord bless me with uh, three sons, and, and uh, I started a group actually that preceded the Wolves, and, and it was uh, just a local youth group for uh, grammar school kids and third, fourth, fifth, sixth graders, and that was uh, about 29 years ago. As those kids got older, saw some uh, challenges that we had uh, some talented young kids that uh, you know, needed to go out of their neighborhood and comfort zone and out of this area and stretch their limits a little bit. So uh, had a, a group of kids that were worthy of that challenge in 1999. We started with a 12 and under group and had one team. You know, we placed the nationals that year and there was no long-term plan. There was no chalkboard. There was, uh, this is not a business venture. Uh, we've never charged a kid to play ever. We uh, haul our coaches, our volunteers, so they lose money and vacation time, pitching in to help. And, and uh, you know, all we ask, uh, you know, from the kids and the parents is uh, their commitment and to do something for somebody else uh, when and if they're able to, uh, if they appreciate what this program has done for them. Nobody was going to be disenfranchised from being able to play because they went to the wrong high school or were in the wrong neighborhood or the wrong city or the wrong area. There wasn't a whole lot of AAU back in Illinois in the 90s. There was just less than a handful of teams. You know, we uh, kind of started branching out. I didn't know much about uh, what was above. We were just concentrating on those 10, 12-year-olds. Uh, we learned along the way and, and expanded, and I never planned for it to go this long. That was purely happenstance. I actually had stopped after uh, – and, and told everyone I was done. And I had a lot of friends who had sons coming up and they said, you can't stop now. You've already done all the heavy lifting. I'm grateful they talked me in to keep coming because the relationships have been just wonderful. And, and uh, not only for myself, but my family and, and, and hopefully for all the players and families who've been through our program. Yeah, man. I mean, I, like I said, you, I know you guys have been around a while and always have done things the right way. I think you really hit on another good point. I remember when I was coaching AAU, and one of the dads asked me, how much do they pay you for this? And I'm like, man, we don't get paid. This is volunteer based. You know, you, you're right. You, you got to take vacation time out of your your real job that's paying the bills. And so a lot of people don't realize how much work is put into that. Um, you're, you're now on the uh, Under Armour circuit. So how did that come about? When did that deal come along for you to go from an independent to being on that shoe circuit? Well, we were on the shoe circuit actually pretty quickly because that first 12 year old team turned out to be pretty good. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, you know, we continued back then there weren't circuits, but you played AAU nationals and Sonny Vaccaro and guys started noticing. We started beating a lot of their teams 
And uh, by the time uh, those kids were in high school, we were uh, a Reebok team. You know, that was a new thing and, and uh, going to Reebok big time in Vegas and stuff. But, you know, you played open events. You played, uh, you know, all over the country and, and uh, it wasn't uh, segregated by what shoe circuit you were on. So in a lot of ways, that was uh, extremely challenging to schedule. You ran into the same top people, same top teams. And, you know, when I turn on the TV now, most of those guys are playing in the NBA. We used to play on Sunday nights in the quarter semis and finals. And, and so it, it was quite an experience. And I think it was a big explosion of travel basketball in general. With that being said, you've been around so long. You've seen the highs and lows. And I know just a couple of years ago, there was some, you know, there was a little scandal. And so a lot of people who don't really know about AAU ball, they wonder what's really going on. And, you know, I, I've had great experiences. You know, for me personally, like it was one of my first times I ever left the state of Indiana. Like it, it, it allowed me to see parts of the country and obviously helped me get noticed so I can go to college and everything. So how do you see summer basketball, AAU basketball? And then also what has kept you around so long to where, like you said, that you, you know, you've been around since uh, for over 20 years now? Well, I, I thought there was a, uh, a need Basically, you know, during uh, that period, the primary reason was it was a way to get back. An opportunity and people said you couldn't do it the way that I was planning on doing it, which telling me I can't do something is a real good way for me to do it. Uh, we had the top uh, Nike team in the area at the time telling me they would just absolve our whole team and they'd take care of it because you couldn't possibly be successful because, you know, you didn't have shoe sponsorship. And somehow we're around and they're no longer around. So, you know, uh, um, I think that was it. But, you know, you began to see the benefit. And without question, you know, when uh, my own uh, children were involved, it was things for us to do together. Uh, we loved the game of basketball. But, you know, it became more and more about the people the longer we did it. And uh, we saw that we were helping a lot more people than we're hurting. And, you know, it's a terrible business model, Marcus. You know, when you don't have any revenue, you just get bills and, and it's you got to raise money all the time. And right. the illusion that sponsorship pays for everything, they don't. They're a small part of our budget. It's a generous, you know, part and we're grateful for it. But we've been sponsored by Reebok, Adidas. And Ten years ago, Under Armour came to us and asked us to be one of their founding teams. For me doing it, I needed experiences. I needed new people. I needed to, you know, broaden it. And, and that's what kept me interested. Uh along with, like I said, the relationship part of it's been invaluable um, for all our players and families and businesses and staying together and, and to keep it uh, where it wasn't for profit. It, uh, it, it uh, wasn't a business thing. Uh, I was blessed with a good career. So was my wife. Um, that was a different motive than maybe some of the people we were playing against, you know, uh, so we could pass on some people who wanted things we couldn't provide and we could take some people who nobody knew about and give them a platform to go play those guys. Yeah. And uh, that's been a successful formula for decades. Man, that's awesome to hear that you not only one of the founding teams with Under Armour, but you know, the, the reason that you're in the game and doing it the right way. And so you also mentioned uh, just a little step off of AU, but you mentioned your, your, your kids. And for those of you who don't know, I, I know two of your boys, you know, uh, Brian, who's now the head coach at Southern Illinois, he was actually on the podcast a couple of weeks ago. And, I, you know, I knew of him as when he was playing at Southern, was a great player there. And, you know, because I played in the Valley, so I knew of him. And I, I think I met Brendan when I was coaching AAU. He might have been at University of Illinois Chicago at the time. And so, you know, how has that been having two sons that are now D1 coaches? Again, for those you don't know, Brian just recently hired Brendan. So they're on the same staff. Brian's the head coach. Brendan's the assistant at Southern. So how did you navigate that? You know, when they when they played against each other and just being able to how, how did you decide who to go see and how, how to support both of them, knowing how hectic, you know, D1 coaches are? Yep. Well, it uh, it certainly was a lifestyle choice for both of them. And that's kind of what I talked to. We have, you know, young coaches in our program and then we have some some guys who have been in the high school game a long time and stuff. And, and, uh, you know, they're able to, uh, to explain the difference between high school and college coaching, but, you know, Brendan and, uh, and Brian, I have a youngest son, Michael, who is not involved with basketball and, uh, uh he works for Salesforce and, and, uh, 
uh, was a golfer and he's six, five, he was the tallest in the family, but, uh, we tried to just encourage them to pursue what they love to do and then do their best in whatever they pursued. Always do your best and, and don't trade your character, your morals for any shortcuts. And, and they've all done that. But with those two, uh, I would say the, uh, Brendan's had his own paths. He's been coaching. This will be 14 years, you know, and, and he got a GA job out of, uh, he played at the D2 up in uh, Vermont, St. Michael's, and he's an all-conference player and one of their leading scores, all that stuff. And he was doing that. And then Brian was, you know, cutting his teeth at Southern Illinois. So we got used to splitting up and my wife would go one place, I'd go to the other. And on the rare occasion, we could go together. Uh, we always looked forward for the day where, like high school, when they played together for one year. I don't believe they worked for each other uh, in, a, in, a, in a title way, except uh, Brendan reminds me Brian's check is a lot bigger than his. <laughs> but uh, I, I think they actually always thought about doing that together. That's what they've told us. That's what they said on your podcast. And uh, the low point was a couple of years ago. Uh, they've both done great. They've moved up in their careers. But... Uh, Brendan was coaching at Illinois State, and Brian was a Loyola, and they had to play in the championship to go to the NCAA of the Missouri Valley Tournament. That was a tough Sunday for mom and dad. And uh, we went to the Scott Trade Center and went way up at the top and sat by ourselves and had neutral clothing on because we knew one of them was going to be elated and one of them was going to be heartbreaking, and there was no way around it, you know. And, and uh, so uh, – you know, we're saving a lot on T-shirts now. We get to wear one color to all the games, and we get to cheer for both of them at once. So that's a blessing, Marcus. Man, I bet it is. That is, that is so awesome to hear, man. Obviously, that's, that's also a testament to you as a parent, you know, of just being able to raise these guys up. And at the, it's hard. People don't know how hard it is to be a D1 coach. So to be able to be at that level, the MVC level, which is a, a very, very good conference, man, I mean, that's, that's awesome to see them to see them together. It was fun talking to Brian about that. Um, but getting back to your Illinois Wolves squad, you know, you've been around a while. And so for those of the people that don't know about your team and what all you've done, could you kind of give us a quick synopsis of how many All-Americans you've had or, you know, t different titles you may have won over the years or how many scholarship dollars you've produced over the years so people can get a grasp of the impact that you've had over the years? Sure. Thank you. Uh, um, you know, the, it took a lot of people, a lot of volunteer hours, a lot of people to help and the families and most of all the players to, you know, produce. And, you know, that first group we had ever, you know, had uh, a McDonald's All-American and, and, and Brian and, and uh, Seattle Adzik who went to Southern Cal. And, you know, we had high majors right away. There was a reason we were beating people. And, you know, we also had an All-American football player on that team who went to Notre Dame. So we had some toughness. But they played together and they played the game. And uh, since then, you know, we've been blessed to have uh, two national players of the year, uh, Evan Turner and, and Frank Kaminsky. We've had three Big Ten players of the year in the last decade, uh, Evan, Frankie, and uh, Kata Bates-Diet. Uh, we've had uh, uh, seven All-Americans, uh, those three, uh, Chase and Randall at Stanford, who, you know, uh, uh, is fourth all-time in Pac-12 scoring, Stanford's all-time leading scorer. John Sherna, who's Northwestern's all-time leading scorer, and they both scored over 2,000 points in college. We had Jared Brownridge, who was an honorable mention All-American, who is uh, uh, third in uh, the WAC scoring ever. He had over 2,000 points in college. Um, so, you know, we've been blessed and I still think, you know, the best is yet to come. We've had players win gold medals for the USA, and uh, compete internationally, Sherna, Turner, uh, Jason Randall, Max Christie, who was, plays with us currently. Um, and, uh, Jason won a Euro league championship with Real Madrid playing with Luka Doncic a couple of years ago, but Jason's with the Golden State Warriors right now. Frank's with the Phoenix Suns getting ready to go into the bubble. Uh, Kata is with the Denver Nuggets, getting ready to go in the buggle. And, and Evan is with the Timberwolves, and they were not invited to this dance. But he is trying to defend his TBT title for his Carmen's crew out of Ohio State, starting, uh, I think it starts tomorrow or next or the next day, uh, down in Columbus with a severe home court advantage for the Buckeye guys. But uh, uh, they're all doing great, and they all come back and give and, and – and, and, uh, their time and they come back and speak to the kids and 
you know, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Jason and, and Barrett Benson, who just graduated from Northwestern and played at Southern as a grad student, and Evan uh, led a panel discussion for our parents and players on social justice and racism. Um, and uh, it was just wonderful seeing them mature and grow into the leaders they are in the communities that they've been at ever, everywhere they've been. That's the credit to their parents. That's a credit to them as men. But for them to come up with that idea and, and to share that with, you know, hundreds of people in our program on their own, on their own time, uh, you know, that, that's, that's winning a big trophy, Marcus. That's winning a big tournament. Man, that is awesome. So as, as you were talking, I was just amazed at some of those names that have come through your program. And as, as impressive as that is, you're right, man. When for them to come back, let's, let's me know how they felt about the program, the fact that they come back and do that and that they're still wanting to get back to the next generation. So man, that, that's super cool. There, there's three main circuits right now. I know there's some other circuits out there, but Under Armour, Adidas, Nike, and everybody thinks that theirs is the best or whatnot. But as you're going into the recruiting season and kids are deciding what teams and what teams they want to play for and the circuits, you know, I know you're not a big, you know, brag a whole lot about what you're doing, but what would be one of the, what would you, why would you say, uh, a kid should play with the Illinois Wolves, and 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 what do you like about the Under Armour circuit? Well, I think you know I've I've always uh, you know I come from an immigrant family, so we always had a chip on our shoulder. Like I alluded to earlier, you tell us we can't do it, then we're gonna try. Um, but uh, you know to 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 go through having been with Reebok at its height with Sonny and Adidas and until the change and then be with Under Armour and you know, you're starting behind the uh, recognition and brand and, and the longevity of Nike for a very young company. Um, that was an attraction to me, not a detraction, you know, and, and uh, uh, I think with us to play for us in particular, we're not for everybody. You know, we're, we're very, uh, you know, we, we, we uh, vet who we have. Uh, we, we believe in winning as a habit. We believe in unselfishness as a habit. We believe in life skills are a habit, what you do off the courts, what you're going to do on the court. Um, you know, we, uh, you know, provide tutoring, individuals, instructions, and I've and, uh, been blessed to have a lot of good friends and, 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 and who volunteer their time in those areas as well. But, you know, at this point, um, you know, we don't do a whole lot of recruiting or anything. Um, I think I'm willing to stand on what we've done and who we are. And our best recruiters are the people who played for us and the families who have enjoyed their son's experience with us. And, and we've been blessed. And, you know, for this pandemic, it's like we've been playing every week. I mean, we are one of the top recruited clubs in the country right now at every age group. You know, at uh, you know, we're rising sophomores, rising juniors, rising seniors. Uh, we have six kids committed in 2021. Uh, a couple to Harvard, Wisconsin, Illinois, Michigan, Drake. There's a couple more that are close. Every one of those kids uh, uh, will go to college uh, for free. And that's been probably, you know, outside of our college graduation rate of being about over 98% with over 300 kids and 60 plus million in scholarships and undergrad and graduate schools. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud of that, that, uh, you know, they stick with it and they use basketball to get to places they couldn't get to without it. And for the blessed ones that can go and play forever, you know, we have 41 kids playing in Europe, you know, we got, you know, five kids playing in the NBA. So, uh, but that doesn't last forever either. And so, you know, there's, uh, I, I always tell my sons that uh, they're much better recruiters than I am because, you know, I like taking who wants to be with us rather than convince someone why they should be with us. Man, that's a that's a great point because I know a lot of AU teams, are, they are recruiting hard and convincing kids. This Man, and if you're just standing on what you believe in and taking the guys that want to be a part of it, uh, that's obviously a big part of your culture. You know, you, you mentioned about all these guys getting these scholarships going into the next year, a lot of people just rely on getting that exposure of, you know, just playing in the, in the open recruitment season, you know, COVID-19 is taking that away from us. So how have you gone about helping these, these guys who have basically lost a summer of, of, of playing in front of college coaches? How have you gone about helping them continue, you know, their careers and, and still helping them get connected with colleges and earn scholarships? 
Well, you know, my, my primary profession is a commodity broker and I had my own you know, brokerage firm. So we had to adapt to a lot of situations in the financial world. And I've been through, you know, basically a financial crash a decade, you know, worldwide. So it was just applying some of those principles to this. But, you know, our 2021 group uh, um, is extremely talented and they have been for a long time. And, you know, there's seven high majors in there and, and they've been that and, and uh, they played up, which has helped. So they were known. They started getting scholarship offers as freshmen. And for the majority of them, it's only uh, only increased. Uh, we have some 2022 kids who played with those guys as well. So we believe in moving kids up within our organization, not taking them from somewhere else. You know, we try to develop them. Uh, but our social media, you know, we're getting six-figure views every week. Uh, we we uh, keep fresh content up there. Uh, the kids like the mixtape. I like the game film. You know, what Under Armour does well is the synergy. And so we have history if you've been with us for a while. But even the new players, you know, we collected before all this really broke down. Um, game film. And, and uh, you know, we have a great group of, of volunteers, Dave Kleinschmidt, Tony Young, who played at Southern with Brian, and DeAndre McCamey, whose whole family played for me, you know, Dimitri and Glenn Watson and, and uh, Eric Long and, 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 you know, all those coaches and Chris Conrad take time. You know, they take time when we're not bouncing a ball and, and they send out film and they send game film and they answer phone calls and they have their own lives and families and stuff too. So this is not me. This is a we organization and I could not do this by myself, but I think we've done a good job of getting basketball news out about our kids and then responding to the calls about telling them about their character and what they're like and I tell every kid who comes in our program, the kids before you earned all this stuff, all these uniforms, all these shoes, all these trips. It's up to you to pass it on to the next group. And if you don't take it seriously, you won't be here. <laughs> you know, it's really that simple. And, and uh, we talk about going on business trips, not playing tournaments. They're business trips. You're, you're, you're interviewing, you're putting your resume of your work out there from game to game, year to year. That's just life. Man. That is, that is that's so true. It's, it's good to hear how you do that so professionally. You talked about all the guys you have, some of the high major guys you have. And one of the things, one of the biggest issues that I've seen in AU is how do you balance trying to, and because sometimes, you know, the shoe circuits, I don't know how Under Armour uh, puts the pressure on, but it, it feels like in some of the shoe circuits, the, the main draw is just get as many ranked players as you can, right? And so, but then with all the success you've had, you obviously place a high priority on winning. So how do you balance that? You know, cause sometimes you get all these great guys and you just can't get them to share the ball. And so how do you balance getting ranked players to make sure that you're still getting, you know, the, the funding and, and, and still being a part of the Under Armour circuit, but then also making sure that you're winning and putting together a really solid team that has great chemistry. Yeah, well, you know, we, we have a little slogan that's on all our shirts and everything else, CPOS, Champions Play on Sundays. You know, and basically that refers to AAU. Most of the championships are on the last day. But in a larger scheme, in a macro sense, uh, that means you are got to work when other people aren't working. And, uh, you know, I'll take, you know, we've had groups with five, six, seven high majors. And those are becoming rarer and rarer because most kids want to be the guy on their team. What impresses me most about this current 2021 class is these families and these kids have decided that they enjoy winning, which they've done at a really high level. They've never lost when they played together, and I've split them up a bunch of ways to make them so they very seldom did. This This was going to be the year they'd play together, and uh, they've decided they like this, and and that's exactly what you're trying to look to if you're going to go to a big time college, right? You want to go to the final four, you want to play and everybody's good and they're all bringing in, you know, the best players in their States and, and not just their towns or schools. And not every year, everybody agrees with that. So we're blessed to have this group do that. And we've had other groups do that. And those guys come back and talk to our guys about that. You know, um, when I started talking with Under Armour, I said, I don't care where a kid's ranked pre-puberty, you know, at 13, 14 or anything. Watch where our guys are ranked when it's post-puberty. And then tell me if we're doing a good job. 
if we're not, get rid of us. Yeah. And, you know, we have three players in the top 100 right now and five in the top 50, 150 and, and 21. And I think there should be six. But I don't know how people got ranked this spring since nobody's played a game since March <laughs> or went up or down. But that's just proof that, to me, what we do has a makes sense and it's a platform for development that kids get better. And our goal for every kid in the program is to have their best days when they leave us, not when they're with us. Yeah. You know, and, and we've been blessed for the most part. They tend to be pretty good college players and some become exceptional college players. And most of them are exceptional young men. Yeah, man, that's really, that's really cool. And playing at a, at a, at a level like that is, is preparing you for college because every guy that goes to college was probably the man on their team. So if you can start figuring out how to sacrifice a couple points for the greater good to learn how to win, I mean, college coaches look for that. I don't think some of these young kids realize, yeah, they, they want to, you know, of course they want to see what talent you have, but they also want to see how unselfish you are, how good of a teammate you are. It's not all about just scoring 30. It sounds like you have mastered or, or close to mastered figuring out how to do that. But before we get out of here, I do want to kind of give you the opportunity. We've talked about some of these guys. So if we were playing this summer in these live periods and people were able to go watch you play, who are some of these guys that some of your top talents that are part of your program right now? Well, the uh, the three kids in the top 100 are Louis Lesmond, uh, uh, who uh, just committed to Harvard, and he, he turned down Butler and Marquette and Illinois and Nebraska and a bunch of other schools. Uh, he's a French uh, international who moved here two years ago, plays at Notre Dame Prep, um, just uh, has a high, high ceiling coming up. You know, he's, he's got tremendous upside. He didn't speak English when he got here, and, and it was an adjustment to schools and, 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 and uh, the language and all those things. I don't know if my children could have done that in reverse, uh, but Louie and his family have done a tremendous job. And then uh, probably one of the hottest recruits in the spring was Isaiah Barnes, uh, who picked up, uh, you know, 14 high major offers with, you know, and we didn't play. But uh, Isaiah's grown a couple inches. He just committed to Michigan. You know, our, our top recruit is a kid who's, you know, been uh, unbelievably productive and will go down as one of the best players in the state history, in my opinion, uh, Max Christie, uh, who's been a top 20 kid, top 10 kid uh, the last couple of years nationally. And he's been the number one player in the state of Illinois since he was a freshman. He's a 6'6 guard, uh, won a gold medal for USA Basketball in South America last year. Uh, he's led everybody, uh, any team he's ever played on, and scoring, rebound, assists. He's versatile. He can do a lot of stuff. Um, you know, he's going to be another McDonald All-American for us. And, uh, you know, Chris Hodges was an early commit to Wisconsin. He's a six eight six nine center who's really long, who will move out and play, you know, in that swing offense for Coach Guard. And, and uh, uh, you know, those are those are kids that have all been ranked, you know, at the end, with the exception of Max, really this year, you know, but we're coming hard for the last two years. And, uh, you know, we have uh, a, a, a few other kids uh, that 2022 that Jaden Shutt's an example of what you're talking about. He's played up with those guys for two years. This was going to be the year he'd play, and he's got Michigan State, Iowa, Creighton, Wisconsin, Marquette, uh, uh, Nebraska, you know, multiple offers. And he goes to a school that started with 40 kids and has 80 now, a tiny private school. And he credits going against Max Christie every day in practice for allowing him to, you know, develop and get there. And, and uh, we have a six, nine kid, Braden Huff, who Northwestern and Creighton and, and, and uh, uh, I think I'm missing a couple high majors offered right away. Well, he was six, four a year ago. You know, so he's a guard, but he's six nine. He's lefty, and and he can dribble, pass, shoot, and guard multiple positions. And and he would initiate things. And uh, Max has a little brother. Thank God, we've coached a lot of brothers, and his little brother is Cam Christie, and he has Michigan State and Ohio State offers as a freshman. Wow. So those are some of the guys that uh, on on the high major level that have valid offers or have committed already and decided to play. And you know. Believe me, we wanted to play. We still do. But things <laughs> got to be safe to make that happen. Yeah, man. If you got if 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 we were playing this summer, as as you just said, it's pretty obvious you guys are going to be one of the best teams in the country, and you always are anyway. But man, I think you're right. This was a this was a special year. So before we get out of here, anybody that watched this 
want to learn more about you, how can they follow? I know you said that your social media is pretty active. So any websites or social media handles where people can learn more and follow Illinois Wolves? Yep. We're uh, at Wolves, I-L-L, on Twitter. And we're uh, Illinois I-L-L Wolves on Instagram. And ILLWolves.com is our website. And ILL Wolves on Facebook. So uh, we have some great people that do uh, do that and help that for this tech deficient director. And uh, uh, we're grateful for them and, and all the work they do and the content they help get us out there to promote these young men. Awesome, man. Awesome. So you guys go check them out, put out great content. And then, like I said at the beginning, man, this is a guy who's been around for a long time doing it the right way. So make sure you go check it out. Once again, Mike, thanks for spending the time with me today and sharing some of this information. Good luck to you and success to you, uh, much success to you in the future, okay? Thank you, Marcus, and to you as well. And look forward to bumping into you at a Valley game this, this winter, hopefully. Definitely, will do, will do, man. All right, take care and have a great day. All righty, peace, thank you. Peace. Thank you, Mike, for coming on and spending some time with me. I sincerely appreciate it. Can't wait to see you guys back on the court. Doesn't look like it's going to be this summer, but who knows? We'll see. But for sure, when whenever AU does resume, you guys need to make sure you're checking out the Illinois Wolves team because they're always top notch and always have some great talent. So good luck to you, Mike, and we'll be in touch with you soon. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just all so great to be able to talk to so many of these AAU coaches and the respect that they have for the game. You guys can learn a lot from that, and I'm just blessed to be a part of it. Moving forward, ladies and gentlemen, I just think that this is going to be something that you guys are really going to learn from. So many high-level AU guys coming in here from different shoe circuits, different backgrounds. Some have been around for 20-plus years. Some have been around for less than that. But all of them have great insight and great detail from a student-athlete uh, standpoint, from a parent standpoint, for college coaches, for other AU teams to learn from. If you want to get better, you have to learn from some of the best. And luckily for you guys, we're bringing on some of the best AAU coaches in the country. So get the details to help you get better because you know what? That's right. Greatness is in the details, guys. Looking forward to coming back next time and bringing on another high-level AAU team. Make sure you be on the lookout for that. Can't wait to see you guys. Have a great week. Peace. If you're six, nine, seven foot, it doesn't matter to me. Handle the ball like a guard. You have to be able to handle the ball. If you are not attacking the gaps the way I want you to attack the gaps, this shit ain't going to work. Understood? Okay, let's go. Let's go. Three, family on six, one, two, three, one, five, six, seven. Everybody, third.